Starliner is stuck in orbit after many delays, and that might be a big lesson for all new vehicles, the most prominent of which soon is Dream Chaser. However, unfortunately, after years of development, Dream Chaser not only has not yet flown into orbit, but also continues to delay its launch schedule since 2021. Why was Dream Chaser delayed, and how did NASA react to this? Will the space plane follow in the mistakes of Boeing Starliner? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The long-awaited debut of a winged space plane will have to wait a little bit longer. During a recent conference call with reporters, ULA's CEO Tori Bruno announced Sierra Space's Dream Chaser would not have its first launch this year. Why was Tori Bruno making this announcement instead of Tom Weiss, CEO of Sierra Space, who usually gives the latest updates on Dream Chaser? Well, it seems like that ULA's new Vulcan rocket's in a hurry, but Dream Chaser's not keeping up with the urgency of its partner company. Dream Chaser's been scheduled to launch on the second test flight of ULA's Vulcan rocket for the past five years. With Vulcan's nearly perfect inaugural flight in January, and if the second flight succeeds later this year, ULA's Vulcan will be certified by the U.S. Space Force to launch the military's most sensitive national security satellites into orbit. This is also very important for ULA since their Atlas V serving the U.S. military is no longer in production, while SpaceX has almost dominated the launch market. Meanwhile, if ULA wants to regain its position, its new Vulcan rocket needs to accelerate its launch cadence in the near future. However, Sierra Space is different. They're not chasing anyone. Their motto for developing the next generations of space shuttles is slow and steady with dozens of tests before flight. Sierra Space has a lot of work to do to prepare the Dream Chaser spacecraft for launch. Bruno seemed quite disappointed about this. Timing's everything. We waited as long as possible on Dream Chaser because we really, really wanted to fly him. It's a very exciting mission. It must be said that ULA's Vulcan rocket's been heavily criticized as the biggest cause of delays related to Dream Chaser's first mission. However, currently, reality shows us that Dream Chaser is a slow-moving spacecraft project. I know Sierra Space still has a lot to do with the space plane to ensure its most efficient operation during the flight, but continuously slipping schedules are making me skeptical. Will Dream Chaser be able to fly by the end of this year as they promised, or will it be delayed to 2025? Let us know your predictions in the comments down below. And hey, if you like this content, please give us a like and subscribe. That keeps us motivated to pump out videos like this for you every day. All right, so if Dream Chaser isn't launched by Vulcan, can it be launched on another rocket? Many people think that SpaceX's Falcon 9 would be a perfect choice, but in reality, that's not the case. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser is designed to be a launch vehicle agnostic. The spacecraft itself likely wouldn't require modification for different launchers, as it's the Shooting Star Service module that interfaces directly with the launch vehicle. One potential issue is the fairing size of potential launch vehicles. Dream Chaser may not fit within the standard Falcon 9 fairing. While SpaceX is developing a larger fairing for Falcon Heavy, it's not currently planned for Falcon 9 and isn't reusable. Launch vehicle capability is another significant factor. Dream Chaser is too heavy for a reusable Falcon 9 launch. It requires powerful rockets like Vulcan Centaur VC-4L with four Gem 63 XL solid rocket boosters on the Ariane 5, both of which exceed the reusable Falcon 9's capacity. NASA's requirements for the CRS-2 contract present another hurdle. The agency aims for dissimilar redundancy with multiple independent systems. This makes it unlikely that NASA would approve Dream Chaser launches on Falcon 9 as it already uses this vehicle for other missions. Looking to the future, Sierra Space has collaborated with Blue Origin on the Orbital Reef project with renders showing Dream Chaser docked alongside Starliner. This suggests potential new Glenn launches for Dream Chaser, although the partnership has cooled recently as both companies focus on their respective projects. Several other proposed commercial space stations, both within and outside NASA's commercial LEO destinations program, have included Dream Chaser in their concepts, potentially opening up new opportunities. But despite its bright future, it cannot be denied that the highly anticipated space plane is being delayed. A long history of delay seems very familiar. Will it follow in the footsteps of Boeing's Starliner? To be honest, Sierra Space is confident enough to surpass Boeing's Starliner because the company is fully committed to its goals, unlike Boeing. Sierra Nevada Corporation's version of the vehicle was initially envisioned to carry up to seven people to the ISS when it was competing under NASA's commercial crew development programs. However, in 2014, the design was ultimately not chosen primarily because of a lack of maturity. That's according to Aviation Week at the time. 
The space agency instead selected SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's CST-100 spacecraft, which are expected to make their first crewed flights as early as the second half of 2019. Sierra Nevada Corporation at the time was beginning to drop tests of the spacecraft prototype. The first glide, which took place at Edwards Air Force Base in California, performed well, save for a stuck landing gear at the end of the flight, which caused the test article to flip over upon landing. The company said the test was a success despite the gear landing issue, which was not the design that would be used for the space-rated version as it was taken from a military jet. Especially following the NASA non-selection, the company continued development, looking for supporters and organizations that might use the crude version, including a European company in the United Nations. As a result, it was the selection of NASA of a cargo variant of the design called the Dream Chaser Cargo System that ultimately breathed new life into the program back in Jan 2016. Talking about Boeing Starliner, although they announced in 2009 that the company was making a substantial investment in the development of Starliner, then known as CST-100, multiple sources shared that this was not the case. Instead, Boeing for a long time nickel and dimed the time engineers working on Starliner. This was also partly due to congressional underfunding of the commercial crew program, but also because Boeing didn't want to put skin in the game. What a difference. Moreover, during the testing of Starliner, we learned about numerous issues and errors with the space capsule, which had a very familiar design in the space industry. In contrast, Dream Chaser is slow and steady. We rarely hear about unresolved issues with the space plane. Its airplane-like shape also provides an advantage, giving Sierra Space a legitimate reason to take additional time to develop its space plane. Compared to SpaceX's Dragon and Boeing Starliner, both capsules resemble those from the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs of the 60s. Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo crews landing in capsules in the saltwater ocean were required to wait up to several hours till a rescue ship or helicopter arrived to pull them to safety. More than half the waiting astronauts got seasick with all the unavoidable pitching and bobbing in the ocean. A capsule coming to Earth on parachutes will need to land in unpopulated and relatively flat areas of the U.S. Since the parachutes have little or no maneuvering ability, it'll be a challenge to reliably avoid hazards like ravines, power lines, cabins, livestock, and barns. This needs to be done under normally windy conditions. Crews returning from orbit in a Russian Soyuz capsule landing in remote areas of Russia have to wait sometimes hours till rescue people arrive. We've seen images on Russian TV of rescue personnel struggling to pull cosmonauts out of a Soyuz capsule laying on its side. We then see rescue people placing them on stretchers for transport to recovery facilities. Experience with capsules landing on water land has shown either method to have been relatively crude and unfriendly to crews. Astronauts I've known would be willing to ride down on a parachute if that were the only way to get assigned to a mission. But astronauts also want to touch down on a runway if that's at all possible. Dream Chaser will perform better and have lower operating costs than either of the other two capsule systems, although those differences could be small compared with the advantage Dream Chaser would have in enabling live TV coverage of the entire approach and landing of each flight. Besides, although only a quarter of the length of the space shuttle, Dream Chaser has greater carrying capacity than other spacecraft being used in NASA's commercial resupply program. Equipped with an expendable cargo module, it can carry six tons into low Earth orbit, enough to supply astronauts on the ISS for half a year. Almost all of those six tons are carried under pressurized conditions. It can also bring back two tons of cargo, including fragile science experiments, thanks to its modest gravity loading on re-entry and landing. There's space on board for up to seven astronauts. Dream Chaser has become the most maneuverable new generation space plane. While it's taken a little while, it's still worth looking forward to. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.